Atrial fibrillation is probably the most common uh, preventable cause of stroke and um, uh, we know that up to 15% of all strokes are related to atrial fibrillation um, and we know that atrial fibrillation is a common condition and over the age of 80 it affects uh, nearly 1 in 10 people. Um, having recognised that anticoagulation is a challenge because we have to balance both the risks um, of bleed, the potential risks of bleeding um, in an elderly population uh, versus the benefits. Um, a number of factors need to be taken into consideration and our contemporary approach should involve risk assessment. Both the risk of stroke using scores such as the chance to vas score um, versus risk of bleeding using the has, has bled score. One of the difficulties is that both of those scores are very much driven by age and, uh, and yet uh, we also recognise that the older you are, the more you have to benefit from anticoagulation. My general approach is, is to counsel the patient about the risk of stroke. That risk of stroke um, is real and apparent, it doesn't go away, and most importantly, we now understand that antiplatelet therapy with aspirin does not have a benefit. Um, using the chance to vas score um, for risk assessment, uh, I will normally do that with the patient, and if the score is greater than two, um, uh, then I would have um, a serious discussion about anticoagulation. We would, I would at the same time calculate the Hasbled score, um, and if the Hasbled score is higher than the Chastuvas score, then actually the discussion about anticoagulation may equipoise. If the Hasbled score is over five, then generally I, anticoagulation would be too risky for that patient, and. Uh, we would normally uh, discuss a conservative approach. With respect to drug therapy, um, we, we recognise that warfarin is an effective anticoagulant but does have inherent problems and the problems are related to uh, compliance, the need for uh, routine um, blood testing through an anticoagulation clinic, but also the fact that we understand that the pharmacokinetics of warfarin are such that it's very difficult to reach a steady state level. And we recognise that probably up to at least a third, perhaps half of patients do not, during their lifetime in warfarin, achieve um, stable anticoagulation. And as a result, we now have available to us the new oral anticoagulants, um, specifically factor 10A inhibitors, such as rivaroxaban and apixaban, which I think are a game changer in this regard. What is interesting is that um, despite um, the 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 cost pressures on these drugs, we recognise that the patients most likely to gain are those at highest risk, which include patients over the age of 75, patients with hypertension, patients with previous stroke, or left ventricular dysfunction, and patients with diabetes. So we should really be um, thinking seriously about giving these patients these newer agents. The advantage, of course, is that the patients are more likely to comply because the drug can be taken once or twice a day and they don't require any routine monitoring um, through anticoagulation clinics. So Unfortunately, atrial fibrillation does not differentiate between patients with persistent or permanent atrial fibrillation uh, versus paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. And we recognise that um, um, even patients with um, atrial fibrillation once a week, um, they have the same stroke risk as patients with permanent or persistent atrial fibrillation. There is, however, debate with respect to duration of atrial fibrillation, particularly in patients who've had atrial fibrillation perhaps for the first time in the context of perhaps an operation. And this is a, this is a common dilemma we see in, uh, certainly in secondary care where patients are referred to anticoagulate or not. Um, there is data suggesting that actually if you have an AF burden of less than five minutes, um, certainly at a single point in time, your risk is less than patients who have more than five minutes of atrial fibrillation. We'd use that um, kind of decision-making together with whether there's any evidence of structural heart disease um, to decide to anticoagulate. So in su summary, AF is common. Um, as a group, these patients have up to a five-fold increased risk of stroke. We should be better at detecting AF and we, we should need to be much more proactive at anticoagulation. With um, risk assessment, um, I think we, one can have a, 
uh, grown-up conversation with patients uh, to convince them that anticoagulation is the key and access to new oral anticoagulants is a real game-changer with respect to ending compliance and to prevent stroke for the future.